In this video, I'm going to focus on the aspect of transition elements that deals with complex ions. Remember, one of the four general properties of the transition elements is their ability to form complex ions. So a couple of definitions to start with. Complex ion, that's a central transition metal ion surrounded by ligands. And a ligand is a molecule or an ion that can form coordinate bonds or date of covalent bonds with a central transition metal ion. We'll start with the simplest type of ligand and that's the monodentate ligand. So we've got five examples in the table there, water, ammonia, thiocyanate, cyanide and chloride. You can see the formulae and the charges there in the table as well. We're going to focus on these three ligands, water, ammonia and chloride. And we're going to use them as examples of monodentate ligands in the structures that I'm going to show you. The word monodentate literally means one tooth. But obviously we can't say that in an exam. The explanation we, we need to give is that monodentate ligands form one coordinate bond with the transition metal ion. And the reason they can do that is if you think about a water molecule, there's a, there are actually two lone pairs on the oxygen. I've just shown one there. That lone pair of electrons can be donated to the central metal ion and a date of covalent bond or coordinate bond can form. Ammonia, there's a lone pair on the nitrogen. And chloride ions, I've shown the lone pair there on the minus charge. So a little bit about the shape now. So the two on the right hand side here, we've got the cobalt hexa aqua two plus ion. That's an octahedral complex with a two plus charge. So water has no charge. The cobalt is in the plus two oxidation state. So the overall charge on the ion is two plus. And if you notice, the oxygen must be um, connected to the cobalt. So when you get to that side, you must show water as like that. The bond angle in an octahedral complex is obviously 90 degrees. And again, we've got a similar looking complex below that. This is the nickel hexaamine 2 plus complex. And again, you can see it's the nitrogen that's joined to the nickel. Obviously, it's using that lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen. And again, if you look at the way the NH3 is written on this side, it's always the nitrogen that's connected to the nickel. And the example on the left here is an example of a tetrahedral complex. So this is CuCl42 minus. And the reason why you can only fit four ligands when you have a chloride ion as a ligand, and that's basically because chloride ions are much larger than ammonia molecules or water molecules. So we get the tetrahedral shape with the tetrahedral bond angle. The CLCUCL bond angle is 109.5 degrees. One thing I forgot to mention is coordination number. So coordination number is the number of coordinate bonds to the central metal ion. Now sometimes people get confused and think it's the number of ligands. It's not the number of ligands, and you'll, I'll, I'll make that point on the next, on the next um, set of ligands. The coordination number here is four, because there are four date of covalent bonds going to the central ion, and these have both got coordination numbers of six. The next type of ligands we're going to look at are the bidentate ligands. Again, literally, this word means two teeth. But obviously, we don't say that in the exam. Um, hopefully, you can appreciate now why these might be called bidentate ligands. It's because they are able to form two coordinate bonds with the central metal ion. So, two examples for you. There's the ethane dioid ion. So, you've got the molecular formula there and it's sort of more of a structural uh, displayed formula and the other one is ethane 1,2 diamine sometimes you see it written as ethylene diamine 
there's the formula and there's sort of the skeletal formula if you like for that so why are these both examples of bidentate ligands it's because the O minus in ethane dioate lone pair on the O minus and that can be donated to the central metal ion and form dative covalent bonds, two dative covalent bonds. And the ethylene diamine has lone pair on the nitrogen. There's two nitrogens, so it can form two dative covalent bonds, two coordinate bonds. So we'll have a look at an example of each of those bidentate ligands that I've just shown you. The first one is this one here, so this is Fe C2 or 4, 3 times 3 minus. So you can see we've got three of these bidentate ligands, and notice it's the, the, these were the O minuses, so there's your two date of covalent bonds feeding into that central metal ion. So because iron can hold six, um, accommodate six state of covalent bonds, we get three of these ligands attached. The overall charge is 3 minus, that's going to help us work out the oxidation state of the iron. So if you remember, each of these ions is 2 minus, so if 3 of those would give us a 6 minus charge. So if we're left with 3 minus, this must be iron 3 in there. We would still class the shape as octahedral still an octahedral complex. The bond angle is still 90 degrees between the O, F, E, O. And the other thing is the coordination number is six. Now sometimes students wrongly say three here because as I said before, they think it's the number of ligands. You can see there are three ligands, but there are actually six state of covalent bonds, coordinate bonds um, feeding into that central metal ion. So the coordination number of this is 6. I'll just show you a, a, an easy way to draw these. I'm starting off with an empty octahedron. So I've got my iron in the middle with the bond straight up, straight down, two sticking back, going back, sorry, and two sticking out. And it's the O minus, remember, that formed that date of covalent bond. And then we can just see double bond O. C double bond O like so. We'll look at an example with ethane one two diamine now. So again we've got three of these ligands attached. So we've got the central nickel ion and three of the ligands, remember they all attach via that's the lone pair on the nitrogens, so there's one attachment there. There's the other one, and the other one's coming in like that. Um, the overall charge is 2 plus because the ethylene diamine or ethane 1 2 diamine ligand is neutral. So this is obviously nickel in the plus 2 oxidation state. Now that's a bit of an awful formula to write, so you are allowed to shorten it. This is an accepted abbreviation for this complex EN stands for ethylene diamine or ethane one two diamine. So that's okay as well. Ni En three times two plus. Again it's octahedral. Bond angles are all 90 degrees and the coordination number it's not three, it's six because there are six coordinate bonds feeding into that central metal ion. And again, I'll show you a nice easy way to draw this. So we've got our empty octahedral shape and it's the nitrogen that's attached. So we've got N, N, and then I'm just going to do that. And that's accepted, believe it or not. That. And then obviously we need our square bracket. Two plus. The final type of ligand that we're going to look at is the multidentate ligand. So we've got an example of one on the board now. There's the full name for this, ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid. So there's the ethylene diamine part. 
and we've got four ethanoic acids effectively surrounding that. So that's the tetra for four. Acetic acid's the old name for ethanoic acid. So ethylene diamine, tetraacetic acid, and you'll be pleased to know we can shorten this to EDTA. It's actually a hexadentate ligand. So you can see clearly the six lone pairs that are shown. So there's one on each of the four O minuses and one on each of the nitrogens. So there are six state of covalent bonds that can form by this ligand. So there's an example for you of an EDTA complex. Because EDTA can form six coordinate bonds, only one EDTA ligand will bond with the central metal ion. So this example here, Cu EDTA overall two minus. Just a little reminder for you there, the overall charge on EDTA is four minus from those four O minuses, if you remember from the previous board. And so let's work out the oxidation number of the copper. So if that's four minus, one of those is four minus. If we're left with a two minus charge, then obviously the copper is in the plus two oxidation state. Again, it's an octahedral arrangement, so there's the two bonds straight up, straight down. There's the two going back, and here's the two sticking out. And the coordination number is six again. Notice we've only got one ligand, but there are six coordinate bonds. And of course, all the bond angles are going to be 90 degrees.